Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and we're live. Uh, that was the smoothest transition we've ever done. And you know what? <laughs> it's probably got to be in the top it. 10. <laughs> I prepared you for like two minutes for the transition. No, you see, yeah, but, yeah, then but then I was also rocking just like, out to songs. You, you did that thing where like it was in a party and someone goes, on the, on the thing in, like on the record and just sort of look at the host. <laughs> that 80s moment with the loser still dancing. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought, that's I what thought dressing like a Pakistani accountant from the 70s would be more efficient, not less I know. efficient. Hey, I know. hey, hey, lamp salesman. Hi. <laughs> but the best lamp salesman in the business. Yeah. <laughs> Special <laughs> lamp from Istanbul and Ankara. You want the lamp? I get it. But all jokes aside, we are live, Bajo, with the Bajo hour. <laughs> What's so that? Any, <laughs> Just yeah. a, it's a joke for me, really. All right. <laughs> Do you know well, Barjo? You'd be very uh, familiar with this phrase, Mister. Rock on. Barjo is the guy from Good Game that like seems to follow us a lot. He's either- oh, Good Game. He the guys from the the studio. No, not them. But he they work with him. Damn, <sighs> he is a seventies Pakistani man. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up! I had a beard mishap today. <laughs> you did. So I did I. What happened? So did I. Well, I got one of them trimmers, right? And then. Uh, apparently, you can only do them a certain way. If you mm. do it the other way, it takes out everything. So I was leveling my right. beard, and I did it with my chin, and everything was gone. You know what happened to me? I uh, I had a I had a I have a shaver, but that damn thing's broken. So I literally just shaved half my face, and I was just like, Ugh. and I had like a Ned Kelly beard, so I had to get two razors, and I was just like. That was horrible. That was much more offensive than what Ali has. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was egregious. But boys, I've got to say, join the club of looking like Hillary Duff in Raise Your Voice. Hell yeah. It's a nice club to be in, am I right? What's one of her I songs like, again? I, huh? like one of her songs? What's her biggest hit? Raise Your Voice. I don't know that one. What's like one that I'm thinking that's So Yesterday. What about That's that? the one. That's the one. So what I, I really shouldn't have asked that in advance, but let's just pretend I didn't ask. That beard was So Yesterday... Yeah, hey, not bad. Thanks, 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 thanks. Well, I'm really enjoying your connections today, Miss Love. You're really on the ball. Isn't it great for everybody to see Miss Love's literal Tuesday come downs right in action? I don't know what uh, these insinuations are, but uh, I did cry today in the car on the drive to work. Can you tell them why? Do you know, okay, sorry. Shh, well, let's, uh, let me Jordan, say it in a creative way. Let me say it in a creative sorry, way. Sorry, I'll let you continue, right, but right. you missed this. Miss Love just walked in before the party. He was shirtless because he had just come from a swim. And he shows me his back and he says, eh, I think bed bugs got me, man. <laughs> Jordan could have been right. Do you Dude, agree? He look at his back. Can, can we show them your back? I don't care. Yeah, go on. Okay, okay. Uh, show us your back aroids. I think. Wait, which, which camera? That one? Just, just the one in the center. Of fuck. I think okay, that, okay. Because I was like last night being like, I'm like kind of itchy and couldn't. I don't know. Yeah, okay, put, put that down now. Right. That's enough. Take a good take, touch it. Touch it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Stop no scratching it. What are they? What is it? I don't know. But Bed bugs, needs, dude. You need chamomile lotion. This is, he, he's, uh, he's succumbed to the uh, pandemic, the new town pandemic of bed bugs. Yeah. Dude, if that's I what I don't it understand is. why the uh, inner west, look, I get why cockroaches like the eastern suburbs. There's a lot of moisture there. <laughs> what is with new town and bed bugs? Is that just their ecosystem? Pigeons and the pigeons have got to eat something. I think it's filled. It's all uh. the dead skin that they feast on. And no one has more scaly skin than like hipsters from the inner west. Okay, so... It's like Mr. Burns' point of people scuttling, <laughs> empty their skin cells, and then scuttle up. I mean, if that's what it is, like, because I'm not down sense. with that. Well, I could have told you all of this. In fact, I have <laughs> recorded message of both Ali and I pleading with you, don't move to <laughs> the yeah, West. Yeah, and there for that specific reason, at least for Jordan. Yes, but what the hell? Everything that you've come around and you're just like, hey, I don't know if you've noticed this before, Jordan, but moving in with five strangers kind of sucks. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if you've noticed this before, but <laughs> uh, also like living in a uh, squalid conditions results to bed bugs. We've Look, had uh, all of dude, these arguments. Marilini says to you, Miss Love, is it smooth? Jordan, was his back smooth? Marilini. I mean, Look, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. It was not smooth. Then he has measles, according to her. So no. bed bugs are smooth, are they're they? Not, yeah, yeah, that's what... What? Hey, thanks for the tip, Star. 
Yeah, measles. Like, yeah, man, it's measles <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but isn't that like isn't isn't it's it super contagious? And I think it went like oh, extinct in late eighties. I can't handle but this. But the new towns brought it back. You know, I can't handle this. Listen, <laughs> I yeah, dude, everyone's saying yeah, it's measles for sure. One hundred. What do you mean the measles? What like Spanish flu? Well, they measles. are two completely different diseases, but I think you're getting at it. Yes, are you it is sure a they're not the same? It's similar intensity of an issue. Actually, worse. Uh, all all I got to worse. say is I'm glad I'm drinking whiskey for fuck's sake. But you know what's awesome about it? I have immunity to measles because I got vaccinated as a child. Uh, <laughs> not with this pro vaccination. Because there was a very real chance if you die. In fact, probably the doctor I did get that was measles, giving you actually, had measles. Sorry. What? I didn't, get, I didn't get chicken pox as a child. I got measles. You know how you're supposed to get one of the two? I, I got chicken pox. Both. I got, I, well, so I could pox, get chicken pox because I got measles as a child. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, sorry. Is Am it I gonna measles, get chicken measles pox? from you? Dude, want... you are going to give measles to others because this God. was 1995 was when I stopped being contagious. <laughs> you know, this is probably the worst possible conversation we could be having because as I've looked at all of the comments, the two things that they hate, first off, uh, star signs, but you're just going to have to live with Too that. Too bad. The second one is Too bad. They're constant... Everyone hates it when we talk about diseases <laughs> and medicines. And that's all we've done. <laughs> well, that's because you're for certain someone over here. Yeah, how could you not? He's a walking lab. Yeah. Look, he, this is what you have to deal with in politics. So if you think that, like, you know... Yeah, I'll start Michelin crying is, again. Th- th- if you can convince him, you can convince the Australian public. About what? Yeah. <laughs> for you're one, just a litmus test in general. Oh, you're talking about COVID again. Fuck. Dude, I'm not taking the vaccination that's been <laughs> the tested guy with on measles four says. people. <laughs> I suppose there is bigger questions at hand, such as when you're on a come down, miss, why do you dress <laughs> like a lad? Just said, it's measles. <laughs> you're not staying at my house. No, she, she <laughs> said she's coming tomorrow. It's coming Thank tomorrow. Thank you. I don't want to come, Sandy. No, you're coming. I don't want to come. Look, I've got Glenn 20 in there. I'll just spray him with it. We'll go. I put that. You know what the crazy thing is? I sprayed the shit. I unloaded some Glen Glen Twenty on that in that ro- in, in my room, so like figure that one out. Well, here's the big question: Did you vacuum it? I don't own a vacuum. Okay, <laughs> dude, that's why you have bed bugs. There's your answer. What do you mean? What do you mean? If you don't clean your house, <laughs> yes, but what you, do you will th- get uninvited <laughs> guests. Vacuum that my bed. Drive on. Fi- You're saying I should vacuum my bed? Uh, that that, would that be a is good also start. a yep. start. Yes. Hey, yep. What are you in the Jetsons? <laughs> Wait, so what do you think? Like you just install the bed and then like, yeah, until- I don't think you vacuum it like a absolute mongoloid vacuums a bed. Well, (laughs) no one does. Can we take a moment to appreciate that his insult was mongoloid? (laughs) And we're banned. Well, I (laughs) say the description of babies in Pakistan. Oh. Not all babies, certain, <laughs> certain babies. babies. Change the sheets weekly. What do you think I'm made of sheets? Dude, that is that is a very re- a decent request. Oh, for <laughs> yeah, well, we can't we can't all live it up like kings and holesworthy. <laughs> do you have a change of sheets? Do you I have, have one change? Machine? I All have right. one change. Guys, come on. Red Cross time. Look at this. <laughs> have you ever seen... Th- th- this is poverty in Ukraine embodied. All right? So we have to start sending this man some aid. AIDS. You can't no, live like this. AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. Either or. It'd probably be better at this point. Give him three Stooges so syndrome. I, so become a patron. <sighs> Everyone's Wait. saying go to a doctor and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy again? No, no, no. I oh, mean, what a strangers. ridiculous thing to say to someone that has fucking You know what else is amazing about this? Listen to this. Someone just said, oh, whoa, Windows. I don't think I can afford this place. <laughs> Miss Love, probably. <laughs> and I literally- Let's upgrade that. Miss Love, definitely. <laughs> no, but that literally happened. Miss Love, I know, that's what just I'm saying. That literally happened. I was supposed to be moving into a room that was just a coffin. And then I was just like, yeah, this looks about my style. And then like another room came up with a window. True story. And I was just kind of like, am I ready to pay for a window? I'm going to have to mull on this for a while. But then I kind of just fell into it. But you know it was incredible? I think it was an extra $15 a week, if incorrect. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> incorrect. How much was it? It was $60 extra. Uh, that's not worth it. Leaving the trap death. Death trap. That's what you th- is that what you think? Is that, was that, is that your- hey, you Is $60 still- a week really worth seeing the outside of Newtown, <laughs> which is darker anyway and worse? <laughs> How much of that money are you going to spend on now your measles treatment? Like you need to take that into account as well. <laughs> 
if you uh, tell- uh, It's not the measles. It might be bag bugs. Nothing there's, gross. There's like at least 500 people saying confirmed measles. <laughs> yeah, but it's Twitch, dude. I don't think they're doctors. Like people are saying we'll send sheets. I think it's a- uh, we'll send yeah. I think it's like a coin. I don't know, double, a double bed, I guess. Make sure they have dinosaurs hey, stop on them. It. Let's get the most childish sheets we possibly <laughs> can sad. just to embarrass him on his Tinder dates. <laughs> he can't buy bed sheets. He's, he's giving out specifications. Someone get, him a bed, someone get him a bed shaped like a race car. Uh, I sleep in a racing car. <laughs> Slav pox. Uh, look, look, Sandy, he's coming tomorrow. And also- I don't want to come. It doesn't matter. You're coming. And the uh, other thing is- uh, with, uh, yeah, yeah j- just in general. Why are you watching this podcast? Don't you hate it? Why Does she hate it? <laughs> I think she's always just being like, oh, it's horrible. It's just nasty. Are you talking about me again? No, calm down. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Not required. She's watching right now. So, yeah, hey, Sandy. Yeah, no, she's watching right hey, Sandy, now. thank you and for you, joining dude, us. Dude, you deal with those things. I can deal with it. Oh, she said, shut up, Shanks. <laughs> She controls the money. She'll just like, you just go to buy some lettuce tomorrow. It's like, access denied. Drrr, access denied. She's Interpol. She's Interpol. Yeah, she's Interpol. <laughs> <laughs> she is my Interpol. She is. Aubrey Paul. All right. Um, but dude, it is, it is amazing. I will say this is about Sandy's like uh, media consumption. Mm. She exclusively just watches things she doesn't like. And sits there and just like, what the fuck is this shit? You know what's funny? I, I didn't say still. I do that sometimes too, though. That's a bit of a mechanism sometimes, isn't it? What do you mean? Like, I love watching Vaith munchies, and I hate it. Okay, this is... Mikaz says, why is Miss Love Geordie's pet hobo? <laughs> hey, Guido. 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 <laughs> I have a house. I have a room. <laughs> he doesn't have a house. I might room. piss in cups and throw them at the door, but it's still a room. Dude, that is that is ridiculous. Did you was that on the main pod? Can you uh, Is that a common thing? You used to do it. Pet hobo. You used to do it. For the same reason, to avoid contact with other housemates. I love all, all my housemates. That's not why I'm just a <laughs> lazy man. They're saying get plastic sheets, piss love. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? That's gross. All right, all right. Too, too intense. Too intense. No, too not in- intense enough. It's true. It's all facts. <laughs> Plastic sheets. Mate. It'll be all sticky, no, in it? the important one was piss love. Hey, I'll take we that. We need to <laughs> appreciate the genius behind that, man. I'll take that. I'll take that. There's not enough paying me out. I'm on board. All right. Well, I think it's all appropriate now that we divert the conversation to where it naturally should reside, which is using you as a cheap marketing focus group. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. Bring it up. Bring what it is up. it? What are you doing now? What what shirts are you selling so, now? No, 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 no shirts. No, no, no. <laughs> we're getting out of the shirt game. It's a mug game. You know what we're getting into? Oh, the mug game. Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. The coffee game. Oh. Look, look, last time we spoke about it and you guys gave us a million names. And I thought in my head that we had already narrowed down the name, which was Stooge Brews. But Jordan said, no, 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 that wasn't a good one. That was probably the worst one. You and we some, can't remember which one was good. So we need you to again name this coffee. Yeah. Yeah, and really it needs to be ones. quick because I need to place an order soon. You had <laughs> some really good ones at the beginning and then you guys sort of fucked it. Yeah, I was always a fan of Shanks and Son's caffeinated concern. Shanks and Son's <laughs> caffeinated beverage concern. As if you're going to top that. Come on. And then what was the other one that we had? Well, we had... Um, Oh yeah, we had uh, truth uh, juice. Truth juice. I like that too, actually. I like truth juice quite a lot. And also, come on, I liked this one. Caffeinated merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we? Uh, bros I reckon brew smash that together. Mislows. Wait, Sandy, Get what are you shanked. reckon? Sandy, are you still watching? Sandy, what have you gone on to hate watch other things? <laughs> Sandy, <laughs> wait, Sandy, Squid answer. Squid tank brew. Huh? Squid tank brew. Nah. Oh, that's not bad actually. Brown pilled, super barrelaro beans. Nah, like in- <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. But it, the thing is, it won't be. Uh, you know, it, it won't have shelf life. Common exactly. sense coffee. Common sense coffee. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nice there's no, there's cup no of common. common sense. Hey, I like this one. General General Mislove Operation <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> it's cheap. I like that. <laughs> it's so cheap. That's what I'll do if I ever start my own coffee brand, which will probably never happen. But. Actually, no. Probably. Common sense coffee. We need to narrow one down. And I before, like before this pre-show ends. Come on. Brew corpse. 
Uh, caffeinated merchandise is 100. <laughs> caffeinated merchandise. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What do they say? What do they say? <laughs> Someone likes uh, Teddy like Flags that? likes caffeinated merchandise. I like caffeinated merchandise. True nah. Juice sounds like Why? Alex Jones' supplement. You get over that in like five days. But that's the whole thing. It's like the B sharp. Mm, Morning Brown. Yeah, true. Piss Brew. Shanked and Shook. The Common Sense Blend. Dead Common Man's sense Coffee Cans. Bad. Common Sense Koala Blend. Killer Coffee. Nah. I struggle... Yeah, I don't know if I want to associate my, my awesome brand with dead koalas. I don't know. Yeah. How. Actually, you, you know what? I suppose I already have. You kind of already Canceled have. Canceled Brew 42. Uh, hipster Suck juice. Suck my brown cock. I feel like that's not a name. Suck <laughs> my <laughs> sorry, brown sorry. cock. Suck my big brown bros beans. Jesus. Jordy's Magic Beans. Ch- uh, common Sense Brew Gade. Um, hey, that's pretty clever. Complain nice friendly, combination. Friendly Broodies. Friendly, friendly Caffies. Broodies. Look... I, I wish we could name them all that. Piss water. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I like yep. piss water. What is up with you always choosing the most shock value name? I don't know. It's just like a suit. If someone suggests like, suck my dick. Yeah, yeah, we'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Best beautiful Bolshevik brew. I like the uh, brew. alliteration. Mm-hmm. Shanks Espresso. Look, these are all pretty good. Oh, dude. Shanks Espresso. Shanks Espresso. How about this? How about this? What about, what about dude, going on the, the Shock idea, value coffee. Going on the idea of giving it a Marxist theme. What do you think about this, <laughs> oh, Dude, I love this. Can, we, can we name this? Controversial, Controversial label around comedian brown's coffee. Brown. <laughs> Damn, not bad. I'm taking a photo like of that. that. I'm I like that. A, a shout out. Q- Who is it? Who is QP it? QG. Controversial <laughs> labor aligned comedian's morning brown. Is that too much? Guys, can you see No, that? that's good. That's as good as the next one, which is the Shanks Labor aligned comedian. Yeah. I still think, look- Labor I'm aligned gonna... comedian presents coffee. Labor aligned. <laughs> labor <laughs> aligned. <laughs> crikey oh, nominated. Shit. Yeah, that's... crikey nominated ass hat of the year. Presents. Sandy said that's the one. Sandy likes that one. Yeah, wait, I like wait, that one wait, too. Sandy, which one did you like specifically? Write that down. Sandy, which one specifically? Sandy. Yo, man, <laughs> she'll, she'll write it. Muddy bean oh, She's gone back to like best kiss scenes 2020 <laughs> compilation. Well, like, like uh, what's it called? Twilight 2. Controversial uh, one. Dude, Sandy likes dude, controversial dude, is one. It, isn't it amazing that that's what she like was watching when I rang her yesterday? What? She was watching a compilation. Hey, listen to this one. Of like movie scenes of people kissing and it's just a bunch of chicks at the bottom just going like, I'm literally so sad right now. That is, that's- <laughs> Damn, that's that's, that's, that's nearly that, and I thought I was sad for crying <laughs> in my Carlos neck. <laughs> hey, if there's any, na, 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 na. Dude, if there's any other chicks in the audience, have you done that? Have you watched Kiss compilations? Because like six million views. Oh, yeah. keys. How to solve a problem like friendly mornings? Damn. I'll take a photo of that too. Shout friendly out Warner mornings. Kebab. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. These are all really good actually, but I still dick I, beans. <laughs> You, I'm still kind of thinking I like the best, like friendly Jimmy's concern, morning, like caffeinated drink. You can't beat those funny but old- Controversial time. labor aligned caffeinated blend. Is That's not bad a- either. They're on par for me. Mm. They're on par for me. Um, red pilled Java party. All right, party. Do, we, do we think we have, do we have <laughs> enough? That's pretty funny. Red pilled Java party. That's pretty good too. Shout but out- look, uh, on, mind on, the, on the theme of Marxism, what do you think yeah, about this? Sex. Bourgeoisie smack. Because that's all coffee is, really, isn't yeah, it? It's like, heroin what for about the like, What about like, like all that. of those? It's a bit douchey, though. It's a bit douchey. Uh, like, unless there's enough. a photo of Lennon being like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think like a labor, controversial labor Dude, what about we call it? What about coffee? we call it CCP? Caffeinated coffee. <laughs> we're gonna, project, like, project. We're, we're, we need to sell this. <laughs> we don't need to yeah, just have you it. Wanted as a to make some. Coffee that's kind of cool. You know what? Jordy's that's bag the ultimate of coal. meme. Huh? Jordy's bag of coal. Drought water. <laughs> Proletariat brand. Friendly Jordy's morning glory. These are all really good guys. Yeah, I'm a big fan coffee. of all of them. Uh, if it's douchey, it'll CCP sell. What are you, Trout87? A bloody. My digital marketing expert? You might she's going to respond with yes. Shanky, shanky bean <laughs> chars. Australian True. coal for China. <laughs> Australia coal for China. What? <laughs> Miss Love Dress is an old farmer on the label. I can get behind that. <gasps> what, about, what about just Mao did nothing wrong? The bl- <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can you please do say allegedly before you get clipped out of fucking context? <gasps> for a coffee. No, 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 no. Okay, what about Mao did nothing wrong? Allegedly. 
the best damn brew in the country. <laughs> allegedly again. <laughs> Double allegedly. No, 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 confirmed. Confirmed at the end of that. Oh my God. All right, CCP, look, I think caffeinated cut. Ca- Caffeinated cuck party. Bolshevik blend. <laughs> these are all fucking good. What, have you been Bolshevik. taking screenshots of these? No, I haven't, but you have, right? Like one or two. These are, We're going to forget all these. Oh, I thought you uh, were doing I it. was taking some. What about a nice cup of shut the fuck up? No, Just it's going the <laughs> Too intense. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to like fuck you. Nah. As the day. My what favorite is still the one that you did. The jank sh- concern, really long shit. That's nothing will get me going as much as like a 1920s elixir, turn of the century, like convoluted we'll s- steam engine name. What That's my this? favorite. That's my favorite. Coffee formerly known as beans. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a, yeah. That's pretty good, dude. What do you guys think about coffee for? I call it coffee, but, they, but you need your name in there. How about this? How about this? That whole concern one and then dash coffee formally. No, like it's this long. This Hey, fucking by the long. way, we have to make a design and the design would, the name would need to be on each of them. Yeah. If it's an entire paragraph. That's fine. You just shrink it down, dude. So you can barely see the name. No, the about yay big. You can read that shit. In cursive. All right, okay. You can do it. All right, so are we doing, we've narrowed it down to that, uh, a, a variation of the labor aligned coffee, or are we doing the shank shanks and sons without no sons present? Cromulate coffee penthouse. Shanks. Uh, <laughs> hipsters tears. That's pretty funny, dude. Hipsters tears. Man, <sighs> that will sell. That will sell. Actually. Maybe something dash hipsters tears. Shout out Dome Kang. Cockroach juice. Bolshevik blend. Communist coffee, Italian mud water. Fuck, there's so many good ones, dude. Well, look, I'm gonna- I'll Oh my God, listen to this. A plain white bag with just this written in, in quotation marks. Contents dash beans. <laughs> I no. love it. That's no. my favorite one. Really? The contest is over. I, I really so like that. You don't like I'm that a one? Big, it I'm won't a big sell. Fan of making it won't as sell. Generic as possible. It won't sell. People no, like, it no one buy it. No, oh, if, maybe if, they you, will. if you if you name it as a joke, like the shanks and everything, and if you plug it, that will sell. <sighs> yeah, what, what if about people like a, the joke, it'll sell. What about a just a shot of two annoying cunts with beards on the front, and then it just says, "Insert hipster names, coffee." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what? <laughs> Friendly Jimmy's presents and that. Oh, what about we make the two hipsters, Miss Cafe, Lucy, <laughs> Lucy and Fergus from the Sydney Morning Herald? Dude, they, they <laughs> like that. They'll like that too much. Like they'll just be like, "Yo, didn't have to do anything. Who's the real winner?" No, that's Sue for sure. That Sue People will buy yeah. if the There's font no way is they have good. Any humor. Teddy Flash. People will buy the font. Is- okay, Comic Sans. Dude, every, everyone has like their opinions. Like, no, the font needs to the be good. Font is key. <laughs> <laughs> bed bugs brew. How much better is this than paying someone six hundred grand to come up with a name? I know, <laughs> I know. These, are, these guys and are way this more. This is a real thing. We are legitimate. Never this in history has it happened who has taken a job so such with such frivolity has actually introduced a brand as well. <laughs> such a unique position, and I'm frankly really happy to be part of it. Cuck feet. If I ever make Cuck. one. If I ever make one, it's going to be Miss Cafe. What about, yeah, what about Cuck Fee? Come on, it's short and sweet. Uh, I like the hipster idea. Koshi's coffee. I like the hipster idea. I like, I like, I like, like five things now. I don't what know. about going off the most successful video that we have? Just branding that in. Top ten cutest dogs. The coffee mix. What? <laughs> Holy shit! That would be like the. Ultimate. Fuck off, Why did everyone take have nothing to do cute. with no, dogs? No, no. It would be the ultimate. That that what you just said is the ultimate fuck you to anything. Like that is the most offensive thing, I think I've ever heard. His worst <laughs> video with the <laughs> shittest <laughs> response that everyone hated, <laughs> and call his coffee rating dogs the coffee bean. I mean, I, I think that's actually might be like genius. That was yeah, Elon uh, Musk. Level. All right, you're selling me, yourself. You're selling me on it's this. It's so fucking stupid. How did we? That it's I, good, I, that it's good. Sorry, that sorry, it's good. I'm just, uh, I'm just top ten. Why is that your dogs? lowest viewed video? I don't know. Because it's because it was shit. <laughs> As if it was though. I didn't, I've made way worse videos. I turned that, off. I, swear. I turned off. Why? Because I was just like, this is not doing it. 
<laughs> Joffy. Yeah. What was wrong with it? Joffy. I don't know. I don't know. It, it was just, just like a dog. Because it was Studio 10 light. <laughs> you. <laughs> so, okay. It was too tame for Studio 10. Yes. Well, like, okay. Joe Hildebrand would have just been like, this is pretty lame. What about, what about, about that? <laughs> Dude, what about that? Cup of Joe with Joe Hildebrand. Oh, he'll, he'll report you. He'll be like, no, Joe he'll Hildebrand's report. house. No, he's facing Every the time I have a coffee now, <laughs> I am traumatized. <laughs> Cup of Joe! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> In his face! Scared! Scared the face. window! No! Mr. Norman's battery. He's Lenny! What about <laughs> He's Lenny, dude. What about Mr. Norman's friendly battery acid? Dude, it's gonna be Joe. <laughs> Cup of Joe. Cup of Joe. <laughs> Cup of Joe. <laughs> and it's a white bag <laughs> with him in the. In the <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, Joe Hildebrand. I shouldn't laugh so much. I love, I love your work. You love his version of top 10 cutest dogs, which he has done in the past. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 all right, all go. Right, right. Look, we've got we've got three more minutes before we go to the regular pod. We <laughs> wasted the pre-show on when we were supposed to ask you Fuck. questions. We just, <laughs> <laughs> we just asked him to send us jokes. Essentially, that's what happened. Right? So we still don't have a coffee name. We just have a lot of jokes. Australia Buzzfeed. <laughs> what we figured out today Thank is that man. our Joffy. audience is just like us. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so, no, they're funnier than us, dude. <laughs> Uh, the, the, Miss Love the, only, the Miss Love Only Fans video was the worst. <laughs> okay, Miss Love Only Fans coffee. Clive and Palmer Subaru. It, really digitally just going, <laughs> mm, naked. Okay, okay. With coffee With being Joe over my- Hildebrand in one window. <laughs> you in the other one. And there's just a little bubble in it just being like, sure. Cause he's called the cops being like, oh, they're just like, sure, sure. The stalker is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that shot of you with the fire hydrant covering your cock. <laughs> well, I'm glad you chewed you for the pre-show because the main show ain't getting better than we'll, this. We'll be, we'll be back after a break. <laughs> Welcome to an all new episode of the Friendly Geordies podcast. How's it going, boys? Oh, it's going oh, splendid. It's so good. Because I am leading the tally in Crikey's patented ass hat of the year, which you can just tell the people that are in it are so funny because they come up with names that people at the ABC think are edgy, like ass hat. <laughs> <laughs> ass hat. So pathetic, isn't it? I wish I, I voted humor. for you and I got as many people as I could to vote for you. And I think that the other thing is, guys, just a little insider tip because we are just with the hard cause at the moment. I don't think that there's a limit on how many times you can vote. Yes. No, nah, I tried to do it again and it said you can't, you've already oh, voted. Oh, damn it. Well, I'm voting for aggro, so sorry, dude. No. Agro was ass out of the year? What did Agro do? I don't know. What, he was just like, he was in an Uber Eats hat and fuck him, I don't want him having the same thing that I do. I was not a fan of his B105 show. <laughs> Look, I made that up. I just assume he's in there. Agro. <laughs> yeah. well, why were you? It's because he's aggressive. You know he's aggressive. No, no. You don't know Agro? Dude, I'm going to show you who Agro is. Just Agro you. predates Cheese TV, and it, what a shame that the boys took the world by storm because I know Agro was taken away from us way too. Like early. I know, I, I know. I swear, like, I, wouldn't Sunrise be better if it was hosted by Koshi and Agro? Oh, it's like Sesame Street. I thought, uh, I thought Agro well, was just really me s- when I'm winning an argument. Yeah, that's what? also true. <laughs> no, Agro is someone that's nuts, but he Probably was not Lee. Look, <laughs> this photo's a bad. Yeah. Dude, I'm sorry. Put him on the flag. Yeah, yeah. Why isn't he on the flag? Look at look at Agro. Yeah, he, he was a very cheeky little oh, guy. Guys, in he fact, was like, if yeah. you're looking for posters to send us, please stop sending Agro. us political paraphernalia. Send us that. Scary. The true leader <laughs> send, of our time. That, that, that is Agro. the cult figure of Australia, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, he's pretty hilarious that he actually is. So good, man. boys. Are you ready for? 
Yes. What are we, who what wants are we to be a millionaire? No. The very oh. first question is, who was aggro? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> aggro uh, was it funny. Do you remember the theme? I don't remember the theme, no. Does this ring a bell? Agro's cartoon connection. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. It doesn't, but now I realize why I peaked in when I was 12. Because we had the best content. I peaked when I was 12 because life like, was best then. It was just like the perfect There, there life. was this attitude of everyone on Australian television having this demeanor of, how the fuck did I get this job? Yeah, and then also, <laughs> not just that, not just that. I don't, I, and that, and then like, I'm not even going to try to keep it. I'm going to, this, I'm going to ride this shit out guns blazing. And somehow, that's what it was like. Kept their job. It was crazy, man. With that attitude, Agro was you will. De- true. Yeah, I think, that, you're, I think right. you're right. That is the secret to success, That is the secret it? to the success. The art of not giving a fuck. Because then, if, <laughs> because then if, you, if you get fired, you might get cult status for the legendary firing. There's nothing, out the, there's nothing worse <laughs> than going out with a whimper, yeah, playing true. it safe and then getting fired. It's like, that's so bad. But doing something Balzac and then getting, you know what I mean? You can go, you, that, that can be a legacy. How about this? If you- uh, yeah, Joe Hildebrand could learn a thing or two from Agro. <laughs> Miss, They're being so mean to him, but I feel like it's this, fair. You will be fired. Okay, fair. <laughs> That's totally fair. <laughs> Take my rightful place at BWS, where I'll be just as happy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what do you mean a ghoul? I just feel like, you said that event, there's some beans. Hey, there's still places to work out. All right, are you guys ready? Yeah. I miss love. Give up the music game. You're not going to top that. All right. Okay. <laughs> now, who who? Are, Wait, uh, who I don't want to cheat. You guys, you guys got to do a I'll rock paper scissors to see who goes first. This is and this is Australian rock. who wants to be a millionaire. So if okay. one person gets the answer wrong, it moves on to the other one. Oh, that's millionaire hot seat. Yeah, a millionaire hot seat. That's what we're playing. Right. And uh, you can <laughs> pass. You know. Whoever answers. I don't know how this game works, but whoever answers- As per usual, it doesn't wh- know how whoever, the game fucking works. Whoever answers, ends up answering the last question correctly, wins this mythical million dollars. Right. Okay, I am more confused about the rules of millionaire hot seat than I was yeah, look, look, we'll, we'll go as we go along. Every time. I love how consistently shit you are a game host, but I wouldn't have it any other way, dude. Okay. I wouldn't have it any other well, way. Hey, man, don't he's a don't butter me up. Host. You're not gonna yes. win this. Just try to lose. I'm not All gonna right, win. So who, oh, who, who, wants to, who wants to go first? Scissors, paper, rock. All right, do it, do it. And don't, don't do this speedy shit. I'm gonna choose rock, you ready? You always do this thing. Scissors, paper, rock. Scissors, paper, rock. Yeah! Yes! So happy to be here, Randy. I'm just, I really need a patio extension. My life isn't complete until I get that. As we all know, every Australian's mediocre life is not complete until they have the essentials of lockout shutters, a two-door garage. No, no, sorry. I'm not going to go fancy here. One-door garage and a holiday house in specifically Jarvis Bay. (laughs) Hey, can you finish this sentence, Ali? Go on. Get tough. Tonight. Because who knows if there's a tomorrow. No, we're taking this out to Twitch. These citizenship tests are crap, dude. Yes, that, that is time. it. Yeah, no, 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 no sorry, we're doing this one to the to the audience. Just first. quickly, fulfill the end of this sentence. This is a pre-test. Okay, okay. Who's you ask the question, Jordan? Get tough. First one, to, first one that does it gets a packet of jelly beans. Don't promise things you can't complete. I mean that one is day. Loud. I didn't say when. Come on, keep answering you. No, no one's answering. Get block out, tough. Yeah, Mitchell O. Shout out. <laughs> And uh, Doctor Mertis as well. Out. What does it mean? What, what, what? Like, what's the thing? <sighs> Ali, you thought you knew Australian culture. I, mean, if I do really like how Ali and for, informs for, the audience about uh, <laughs> global political matters that are happening right now, and we inform him culture. about TV in Australia from <laughs> thirty years ago. It's just from an ad. You know what it's from, dude? You know what it's from? It's from a ad for bl- <laughs> blockout shutters. Really? Hey, whoever answered that question. Thank you. You win. Yeah, you win a pack of jelly beans, right? Yeah, you're gonna send them. The I'll pack send of jelly them beans. to who was it again, though? <laughs> I forgot already. All right, are we are we ready? So who? Yeah, we, we are. We are. We who are. won the Who won the rock paper scissors? Your you boss, man, Jordan. What me?
Oh, is that God, so long? Clip? There's Sorry. very little difference between who wants to be a millionaire and I beat her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first question for you, Jordan, is you can either choose to answer this or pass this. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to see it. In 1953, David Warren, the aeronautical research laboratory who worked at the aeronautical research laboratories in Melbourne, invented an ingenious device now installed in every international plane. What is that device? Black box. Cool, cool, cool. What the fuck's the sound? (laughs) (laughs) The sound of your nipple. Uh, taking out lactation. Oh, <laughs> God, you're a disgusting young man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan. So you get the next one. You have mm. just won one thousand dollars. I'm guessing. Cool. It's a hundred bucks, is it? Hundred bucks. The funny thing is, he probably bucks. has. But you know, that is life. not a hundred dollar <laughs> question. A hundred dollar <laughs> question is, what is your name? Yeah, Fitzgerald. You sure you want to lock no, that in? No, this is all. Down at your name tag. This is all trivia. Uh-huh. This is all Australian trivia. Uh-huh. All right. So next question for you, Jordan is. Oh, he gets another one. Fine. Only yeah, if he keeps answering, All he just right. wins. Only five countries are bigger than Australia. What countries are they? China, the US, the USSR, now known as this shit. <sighs> Fuck. My wife is going to be very mad at me if I don't get this one, Eddie. <laughs> we just visited it. Yeah. Tip of my tongue. Can I answer in this place? No, not yet. Okay, India. Oh. Ah. <laughs> there it is. Is it Greenland? Right. No, the answer was uh, Brazil and Canada. Bridge. Fuck, I wasn't going to say right, that. All right, so Miss Love, you're next. Who remembers Canada? All the way tucked up there. Miss Love Bella are you, are you, are you, hold on. how you feeling, mate? You feeling good? Look, I'm covered in big bug shoves. Coming down from drugs and, and my and I'm fucking tired. So not great. It not. Great. I'll be honest, Shitty. I really need this hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I really do, mate. I really do. <laughs> what are you, you going to do with all the money? That hundred dollars because he can't access his OnlyFans account. I don't know how. <laughs> he just got publicly humiliated. Got the title of worst friendly Jordan's video of all time. Yeah. Can't get the money. It's not not everything's coming up Smith's love. You know, it's just <laughs> tough. <laughs> just tough. <laughs> yeah, okay, go what on. am I going to do with it? Look. Well, what are you going to do with all the money? Uh, who, who are you here with? Who am I here with? Uh, my cousin, Freddie. How, how's that? Do you not have a girlfriend here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep it going. Yeah, yeah, just bring it on. I don't care. Rolls off my bed bugs back <laughs> like water. Um, all right, all right. I'm going to use it to buy a guitar pedal, Eddie, because I don't have any of those. Yeah, good, good, good stuff, good stuff. Oh, best of luck, mate. Uh, this, I, I have a feeling that uh, this, this, this question you, you'll like. Dick swinging on ACDC frontman. Oh! Bon Scott. <laughs> oh, shit. Personified hard rock. Not wrong. You're not lying, mate. But where stands his statue? Uh, Fremantle, <laughs> Perth. <laughs> That's like the only thing he knows. Yeah. He got like the only thing I know. I, but I took him to that statue and forced him to take photographs in front, in front of it. True yeah, story. That was his close encounters of the third kind, just making it in mashed potato. Just being like, Miss Jordan. <laughs> I think we need to go to Fremantle. <laughs> we went to see the statue. <laughs> All right, well, perfect. You're basically a slumdog millionaire. You got a free you... trip to Perth. <laughs> I wasn't satisfied. To see, I to see the statue. <laughs> well, I thought that like, I thought that Fremantle would literally just be like every celebrity on earth and Kevin Park would be like, hey man, making burgers. You want a double or a single? And that didn't happen. It was just a lovely portside town. <laughs> I know. Bullshit, dude. Second question for you, Miss Love. You are oh, shit. Okay. You are a few steps close to winning a million dollars. Okay. And probably <sighs> seventy-five guitar pedals. Dude. Uh, question for you is, Miss Love. Australia. Oh, no. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. This is a I big am. one. I am. I'm listening. Australia dude. is abbreviated from the Latin Australis, meaning southern. Although first used in dispatches 1606, it was only made official in 1817, replacing what word? Uh, oh, I know. Wait, I know what that is. Wait, is but it? you can't answer. You can also, what you can do is, 
you can skip. Because in this game, it's not how many you answer, it's whoever answers the last question wins. So you can either choose to answer now. That's how Millen Hotze, that's yeah, how yeah, Eddie plays right. the I game. I didn't know that, okay. So you can either choose to answer that question or you can pass, hoping that he'll get ev he'll get some answer wrong and he'll come back to you by the end of the game. Okay, um, what's that? Is that? Skip this one, miss. If you don't know it, you're not going to guess it. <laughs> can I, yeah. should, I repeat the, should I repeat the question? No, but I... Are you Caledonian? Wait a second, can I ask a question? No, I can't, I can't, I can't ask another question. Yeah, go on. Uh, we not, might not answer okay, it, but go it's on. Not, okay, it's not the name of a... No, 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 we can't answer that kind of question. Is it, is it a male or a female? Not that. You know the name that the Dutch gave the name first or some shit? It is that, isn't it? Don't say that. Okay, what's the answer? It's, uh... It's you can't skip now. Yeah, it's, um... I gotta remember it. Fuck, fuck, fuck. It's, uh... Cogburn? No, 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 hold on, hold on. Terra Nullis. Terra Nullius? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry, you're wrong. Uh, Actually, you deserve two for that. Terra Nullius uh, means uh, no man's land, which yeah. is a legal status of... Australia at the time, meaning that there was no one over here except for Aboriginals, but we never recognized that. So I was right. You were so wrong. Pretty sure I was pretty close to right, man. The no. answer is- If I is said Nova Scotia, I'd be so wrong. But let's see, uh, let's see. That I think that's be what it's right because be I think that's also Latin, but you got the wrong country. No, I didn't. Okay, yeah. so what? No, I didn't. Uh, that's the right country. No, in terms of that's Latin, but the name it was named after a Dutch dude. Oh, for fuck's sake, so Dude, wrong. Uh, our ass. audience knows it. All right, it's Jordan's. The answer is- No, wait, Jordan can No, no, just keep going. Oh. No, 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 he, he, he oh, can't. Okay. The answer was New Holland. That was the original name of Australia. There bullshit. I've never heard that before. That's bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> I don't think you can do that on the citizenship test, but maybe you can. I think that's bullshit. Okay, never. so- New Holland? I've never heard that Australia was New Next question for you. Mm. Jordan. Takia. You're close. <laughs> You're close to winning this. Which alcoholic beverage holder was invented in Australia? Well, that seems like a mislove question. Over to you, Pat. No, you no, 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 no. You pass? Yeah, I don't know. A stubby holder? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have to get the essentials in. Just what was it? The answer, unfortunately, was um, cask wine or goon. Holder? Goon, the wine cask. That was invented in Australia. Oh, okay. Oh, I suppose well, that's a holder. That's very interesting to know. Goon. So both of you got it wrong, but it wait comes sec, back to Jordan again. What if I was right? Then you win and you get the next question. No, it might, One I might step be right. closer to winning a million dollars. No, but it, it could, I, <laughs> uh, easily the most interesting part of every podcast is rules being explained. The, uh, the fucking... I think Australia did invent the fucking stubby holder. That's not the answer. But what if it's correct? Okay, yeah, if it's correct. Had enough room. No, I'm fuck you. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. fucking right, googling okay. it, you fucking cheaters. Jordan, so yeah. for you, the next question. There are two Australians that have hosted the Oscars. Mm. One of them is Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. Who's the other? Russell Crowe. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> you gave me false hope. Hey, fuck it. Do you want to answer? No, 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 yeah, was it? I, I bet you I know who it is. Okay. Wait, do he's, I want to answer what? Paul Hogan. <laughs> but unfortunately, you don't get that. It is Paul Hogan. Hey, Paul Hogan. Can I, yeah. may I just read something out to you? Astra uh, whatever. Australia's sister and son's man, blah, 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 blah. One of the country's most iconic inventions is the stubby holder. Yeah, but yeah, that's not well, what I was looking was for, he, was yeah. I? This is bullshit, dude. All right, fine. You, 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 Absolutely you, fucking look, rigged. Here's the thing. I was right. There are two me. more questions. Uh, whatever. If you can answer both of these questions, mm. you win. Uh, or if one, if in both of these are the most difficult ones. So that's okay? not a partial. <sighs> Shut up, Miss Love. Stop being a sore loser. Okay. <laughs> these are these are tough, but you get options with this. Okay. Well, for one of them, you get options. So Jordan, the question for you is. The world's largest cattle ranch is in Australia. It's a fact. What state is that cattle ranch? Western Australia. Oh, really? Queensland? You <laughs> still got back and forth. Go on. I'm going to say <laughs> SA. Yeah. Uh, I knew it was somewhere. Way, everyone's on my side. The other two thirds of Australia, but no one lives in. Everyone's what else are you going to fit there? 
All right, saying Jordan, if you get this right. There's no cattle in Australia. You, you win. <laughs> yeah. If you, well, that'll be good if you win. So <laughs> Okay, all right. <sighs> Glad that you're here to, uh, you know, clarify that. Last question. <laughs> yep. Oh, shit. A popular television program in Australia is called The Biggest Loser. Good That's a lie. It's not popular. <laughs> <laughs> Name... I don't know, I'm pretty One sure trainer watching. from any season of The Biggest Loser. Whoa. <sighs> that American chick that has the greyest complexion I've ever seen in my life. Does well, that count as an answer? No, you gotta give me a name. Mike. <laughs> Mike Kickass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it's getting close to one of the names. <laughs> ah, ah. All right, Mitz, you go. I don't even know the question. Look, this is about a million thing. dollar question. What was this about the biggest loser? This is a million dollar question. Whoever answers this wins. You're going to get a stooge. Name me one of the trainers of any ah, su- season of me. big uh, Biggest Loser Australia. Oh, for fuck's sake. Wouldn't uh, it be amazing if George Calambaris was a... Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the fat guy called? Uh, that guy with the cravat. <laughs> Yeah, Matt Preston. <laughs> Matt Preston. <laughs> Lock it in. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Who? Give us some names. You were pretty close. You said Mike. Mike Kickass. <laughs> no? Alright. Might as well. But you know what? Okay, give me another name. That's that's the last name. Mike Mike okay, Michaels Just is guess the last a name. name. Mike Legend. That's not a name. Isn't it? What, do you think like his Wikipedia would have Mike Legend? Fair enough. <laughs> Only John Astronaut. Legend is that. Max okay, Bauer. does like any- Formula One. Does any, any, anyone in the audience know the answer to that one? This was a tough one. Um, okay, how about Mike, multiple choice? I'll give Mike, you- Okay, Michaels is the last name. name. Mike Legend. Oh, shit, sorry. Oh, hello. Us. Okay. I'll give you, I'll give you uh, a few options then. If that's the case and no one gets to know it. Um. So the last name of one of the trainers is Michaels, mm-hmm. which is very close to Mike. Mm. Is their first name either? I should probably thought of these names: Tom, Tom, Dick, Harry, mm-hmm. or Jillian. Jillian. Mike Jillian. Damn. Jillian Michaels. Greatest, <laughs> Jillian Michaels. Fair enough. Fair enough. This. Yep. One of the greatest Australian icons of all time. <laughs> well, Probably did also host the Oscars. <laughs> the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be any one of these. Michelle Bridges, Shannon Ponton, uh, Jillian Michaels, Bob Harper, Steve Willis, the Commando, Emma Hutton, the Amazon. I remember the Commando. Tiffany Hall yes, or Libby Babbitt. I'm glad that you picked up the de- baton of watching crap Australian TV where I left off. <laughs> Yeah, there's a reason well, that you're on this podcast. <laughs> well, look, there that we go. You are so, a millionaire. So now you're a millionaire. All right, it's accurate. The world is harsh. Stumbled over the line. And there we it's are. The man who needs money yeah, gets no, zero. The man ac- who yeah. does not need money gets another million. He really did win a million, <laughs> and I did not. <laughs> Fuck. Well. All yeah, right. Well, yeah, look, that here. only took 25 minutes of the podcast. So. Fair. Um, well, now, I'm glad about that. We the next dr- segment mm-hmm. is very, very interesting because Jordan's about to tell me a story which I don't know of okay. and I'm very interested on hearing. Jordan, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, because it is the story that I'm going to tell. Yes. So I do know about it and you don't. Yes, t- tell Let's us. Do tell it. us. What's, what's happening? Well, uh, recently I was approached by a gun former ABC journalist that was a massive fan of my work and I said but why you used to work at the ABC and he said yeah but there's a reason I stopped working here. shit <laughs> did you have fans of the ABC come on do I yeah for sure I'd say like my a heavy oh. 37% yeah the fans. guys that worked at Good Game were familiar with my work that's right they thought that I was the bad guy in Half Life <laughs> <laughs> You're way too animated to be that guy. He just walks around with a briefcase. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I do that with my little water tester kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we? Hey, there's no lights now. Well, you want to show it off? I was going to because the aquarium year. looks really nice now. It does. Wait, more you, boss. But, but you, yeah, I think, well, there's a lot more fish in it, but can you, you can't turn on the lights now, can no, you? No, you can't. Well, next week, next week. 
I, I would be so much happier if I just spent my day starting up one of those. Okay, hey, this is Jordan Aquatic. Yeah. Yeah, people have questions about lowering pH. If they think well, it's a good idea, uh, I personally <laughs> think it depends on what fish are in the tank. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you disagree with that, you're factually incorrect. So this That's is right. not a contentious point at the moment. Now, onto the big... I noticed there was a lot of mean comments in the blog, and I'm just going to stop doing these videos if there's continue. Yeah. <laughs> now onto the big question of the day. Discus. The fun is fish. <laughs> Fuck, dude. You are on the wrong pod. You need to be on that, dude. Yeah. And I, need to be, and I need to be on some fucking nerd show being like, we all know germanium's your warmer sounding pedal, but is it a better sounding pedal? We've got a pedal expert in from Harvard here. We've got some guy who's definitely related to Socrates who now spends all of his philosophical <laughs> brain power mulling on that. But that's why hey, it's good that we're all together. On it. Look, Ali is the only one that belongs on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> By default. Um, but how is that? Have, I want to know about this West Papua story. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah. God. This uh, guy who's a lawyer came up to me and said, I'm a huge fan of your work. And I said, oh, yeah, what, for exposing corruption? He goes, no, dude, Aussie court. <laughs> He's yes. a 65-year-old man. Sh- that's amazing. Shout out Lithgow. Yeah, well, he was saying, because he's just been in the system for so long, that he, he was saying, he said to me, you just walked in with a notepad, didn't you? Wow. And I said, how did you know that's this? That's amazing. Yeah, because that's every day in court. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I There's went. a reason lawyers do pro bono because it ain't pro bono. Yeah. They're getting their own. <laughs> They're getting paid in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, in, in gags. <laughs> it's a valuable currency, dude. Uh, Especially if you're a lawyer. It's really spreading happiness. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's better than like a Will Ferrell film, isn't it? Well, what isn't? <laughs> Ah, excuse me. So let's not get carried away. <laughs> what Why is it? Ali comes into bat? Of course he does. Stop bringing a great man down. Especially with when he was in that dynamic <sighs> duo with the guy that looked exactly the same as him. Gray hair. Such a good movie. Who? Like when they were Step two. Brothers. Oh, Step yeah, Brothers. Step Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Look exactly. Point in case. It was a public service message. Dude, all what the I want to know is talk about your brothers f- being maybe attached to you. Why doesn't he fix his fucking teeth? He's just so rich now. And why does he still have that stupid Luna Park hair? He's supposed to remain funny. <laughs> so weird. Luna Park. He is such a weird guy. Like I don't. Th- I wouldn't be surprised if he was just a fucking hologram. Anyway, we are getting detracted. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So this guy, this lawyer, came to you. So he came up and he said. He was just talking to us about a bunch of stuff that I can't reveal now, but it is really cool. And one of the things he was talking about was that he used to go to West Papua all the time and try and get the Australian press to report it. And, of course, they never did. Uh, And they still don't to this very day. And he was on the badass journalist show, which was Dateline, which was the... X-rated Four Corners. Everybody that thought that Four Corners was hardcore in the 80s, no, no, Dateline was where it was at because I think it took Alexander Downer and John Howard about seven years to figure out it was on air. And then <laughs> as soon as they did, they gutted it. But it used to do some hardcore stuff. Yeah. And it was where all of the naughty quarter journal you know what it was it was that moment in all the 80s cop films where they'd say you're if you case McGonagall <laughs> you're a damn good cop <laughs> I'm putting you on Winston's beat <laughs> ah, but Winston's beat there's no action there like it was that they every single journalist that was a gun was just put on dateline and so even for that West Papua was way too hot and no one would ever green light it and they green light a lot of stuff. I think Dateline was the show that outed that Australia was stealing East Timor's gas. Dang. So it used to do the heavy lifting in Australia. Anyway, he snuck in and out of West Papua to get footage five times. He has reels and reels of it that have never seen the light of day. And as you could imagine, it'd just be so scary (laughs) what is going on there. For anybody who doesn't know, just very briefly... There is a slow motion genocide that's what, like a hundred meters away from our shoreline. So that's intense. That's happening in Indonesian territory because actually one of the good examples of like how no one gives a shit about that. There's a lot of genocides that we get cancelled for that are happening several, several thousand 
miles away and this one's happening like right next door and most people don't even know about I it. I didn't even know about it, man. Yeah. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know about well, it. This is the it's just like the, the media doesn't want model, you to right? know like about it. It's yeah. just right, it's very right. interesting that everybody seems to call everything that the mainstream media says is a genocide is a genocide, but everything that the mainstream media says is not a genocide, it's an exercise in extending democracy. <laughs> 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 that is always just not. Mm. But And that's the other thing as well. There's this great book, actually. I'll recommend it while I'm on this subject. <laughs> the Politics of Genocide. It was written by... Uh, Edward Herschel or whatever his name, Edward Herman, <laughs> boss the name. guy that uh, that is a boss did, name. Well, I think think that's his name. The guy that co-writes with Chomsky. Uh, Obviously, he writes a lot of media coverage stuff. So he has this book where he just argues that you shouldn't even use the word genocide because it's just again become like a political tool that they use to get everybody behind action in certain countries that's always about oil and gas, and then just turn a blind eye to mass murders where it's convenient to them. This is one of those. I think that the politics pretty much behind West Papua is that there is a major gold mine there, the biggest in the world, and so they've just put it in the middle of the jungle and they just keep expanding it because it's massive and they just keep finding more and more gold. And every time they do that, they just have to shoot off all the natives that are near it. Otherwise, they'll just get spears and shit chucked at them because this is the other thing that's amazing about this area. Filled with uncontacted tribes. Papua New Guinea, West Papua, Two of the only nations left on Earth, well, West Papua Territory of Indonesia, whatever it is, uh, that have uncontacted tribes in them. We know of, I think, about 100. No, there's 100 in the world, but the vast majority of them are there. And that means that there's also uncontacted tribes that are actually uncontacted, as in we don't know that they exist. Wow. Like like that uh, guy who, that uh, Asian Christian missionary who went to... Uh, what was it? The Andaman Islands and oh, got yeah, shot. Oh yeah, people know that mm. those guys exist, as you said. But some of your fishing buddies are just like, and that's where the Uga Boogas are. <laughs> Hello, and then they just wave, and then the all said to are like, "Hey, this guy, this guy, this Samoan <laughs> no. guy I know who went there for like a research project." Uh, was telling me the fisherman was like, "Yeah, uh, what we know is to stay away from those guys." <laughs> yeah. Why? Why do you say that? Because, um, dude, they because they have a reputation of killing. It was this, they it's only like idiot around. missionaries that know what they're really waiting for is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> and, right. and and bring like, not only they, they just take, and I think they kill him because yeah, they always end up bringing like smallpox or like if Miss Loves goes there, then they'll, they'll <laughs> take measles or some shit. So, Give me a hug, brother. Have you heard of the mush, Russian muff? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's better, Russian? So yeah, go on. <laughs> Spreading the word of tone. Now, uh, so yeah, the, the only spreading f- the tone of tone, the only universal language. <laughs> and then they all start rocking out, and then just above <laughs> the island, you just see the Pepsi logo come up. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me! You're fucking killing me! Dude. Jesus! I want to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> Wouldn't that though? be an amazing ad? We should really lobby Pepsi to do that after they did that egregious SJW. Join the conversation. No, go the other way. Do it. It'd be the best out of all time. Don't you reckon? Go to North Sentinel Island and instead of giving them coconuts like they did in the 90s, just chuck Pepsis at them. Jesus. (laughs) Pepsi too. Such the inferior soft drink, isn't it? Like who the fuck drinks Pepsi apart from your editor? Yeah, I don't know. And he only drinks it when there's no Coke. Yeah, Yeah, Pepsi, uh, your editor in Russians exclusively. And wouldn't it be amazing as well? Because the guy, that, the guy that went there, doesn't he look like yeah, he Pepsi. should be in an ad for Pepsi Max? Who? He should have done that. Spreading the word of flavor. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're the guy that got killed in North Sentinel in 2018. Oh, I, didn't, I don't know what he looks like. I was obsessed with that story. I'm obsessed with Amazing. uncontacted tribes. It's the only thing that I'm really on board with, with ABC <laughs> boomers. All you, need, all you want to do is contact them, don't you? Mm, no, I reckon that'd be terrifying. I do know of a story, just as a quick side note while we're talking about this. There was this dude, that one person that works with me, their friend was a drug runner for Pablo Escobar. What? In the 80s. And because he had like an entire drug empire and he was getting, I think, heroin from Thailand to Australia through a seaplane. And, oh, Coke, sorry, Coke. And Whew. Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> the enemy of Pepsi. <laughs> the Coke Wars of nineteen 19- <laughs> cocaine that makes it so much better. <laughs> the Coke Wars of nineteen eighty eight. 
<laughs> yeah. But he, once while he was flying his plane, got caught in a storm <laughs> and landed in Papua New Guinea and met an uncontacted tribe. It was the fantasy of every boy because every 50s comic is always that, of just being in it and then just, you know, crashing in the middle of Africa or some shit like that, mm. trying to find the golden skull. Except for he just had a fuckload of coke. And so I think that what happened is he crashed there. This tribe just came out and was like, and they freaked the fuck out because they've never seen anyone outside of their tribe before. And luckily, he had a gun because he was running coke. And so he just pulled it out and just went in the air once and they freaked out. Fair <laughs> enough. Obviously, yeah, right? Yeah. And you've never heard a sound like yeah, that. Yeah. And so they just bolted into the rainforest. And then he was able to just follow his way, like in Heart of Darkness or something like that, down the river to Port Moresby or wherever it was. Holy crap. Isn't that incredible? That's amazing. Uh, I think this was just when New Guinea had gained independence as well. So there was still, and it still is today, apparently, headhunting tribes out there. So it could have very easily been hit by an arrow. Wow. Um, We saw uh, this, this, uh, the journalist guy, what was he saying? So he, sorry. (laughs) Can I just please pe- sh- shout this out? Measles versus misloves equals mees love. Mees. <laughs> For those of you that weren't part of the pre-show or weren't here or not patrons, well, become a patron, but we were talking about how mislove now has measles. I got the measles. Show them your back. No. The, the, pod, the pod guys don't know it. We'll continue the story. And this is why you need to become a patron. So you get more exclusive saucy assets no, like no, this. Show, That's show right. That if you're a fan of OnlyFans, you'll be a fan of Patreon. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's measles, but whatever. Uh, well, well, we, we've we've narrowed it down. We know it's measles. All right, it's measles. Um, Am I gonna die? So yeah, the the journalist. Anyway, he was going in and out of West Papua trying to get this footage played in Australia. Never got anything out of it. I was saying, if I went there, would it be fine? And he said, Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I suppose the last time I went there, I was almost killed. And by almost killed, <sighs> the story is pretty much. He was Neo in the Matrix, and there was Morpheus going, take 12 steps. Okay, duck. Now, now just run to the right. It's too slow, too slow, you're caught. <laughs> that happened to him. He was in West Papua. He was getting the footage. Then the freedom fighters that were there got through their intel that they were onto this journalist, the Indonesians. And so, <laughs> so good as well. He was in his hotel there. And they said, they're going to try and do a hit on you. And he looked around going, who? Who could possibly do this? And then there was just this really muscly guy staring daggers at him with a crew cut hair, like really ripped, <laughs> just pretending to be a shoe shine boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a guy. <laughs> In his absolute prime, clearly just roided up, staring at him like this. <laughs> Just waiting for him to leave. <laughs> so what did he do? He ran away? So he went out the back entrance. He caught a plane to Jakarta and thought, fuck, that's the end. I can't go back to West Papua. And while he was there, because he has all these connections of to building up them over the last 20 years, going to the same motels, he used to go into West Papua with ex- I can't remember what they're called. What's what's the British elite forces called again? MI no. Not MI. Elite States. forces. The real rawest mm. of the world. Like Green berets beef, or something. Beef 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 eaters. Eaters. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So good. Walking on. Move along. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to <laughs> see here. You will pay me in prime cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got some gin then in it? <laughs> SAS and all saying. <laughs> You better be having a stew tonight. Uh, <laughs> Has anyone got any damper? Damper here? Fuck, it's muggy down here, isn't it? <laughs> I'm starting to think this isn't the best way to dress for these missions. <laughs> Wearing a puffy uh, little red riding hood Queen's Guard outfit made with checkers and a big hat. <laughs> and a spear of my own. It's hot, my knickers are getting sweaty. 
Well, I think you meant the so British Special British Forces, British, right? British Special Forces, whatever they are. No, yeah, so they used to be, dude, it's so boss because don't you think you see all of these action films where there's just retired Special Forces somewhere of some British guy going, yeah, I'll do the job. Five grand, yeah, up front. I don't do nothing until I see it all in cash. Obviously got to be in yank money, yeah. Jason Statham. <laughs> Basically, Stop. Jason Statham, yeah. So they used to go in and get escorted to the uh, rebel forces fuck. with like eight dudes of the most crack elite guys. That Wait, just is this the Expendables or are you telling me a story? I know. <laughs> I don't know oh, anymore. Yeah. Is this the that's Italian the, job? No, this is the Expendables, dude. That's the exact oh, story. The Expendables, line. right. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it would be that. He used to travel with serious guys and used to see conflict all the time. And there was just sort of like moments because they were just so highly trained and they'd, they'd be hanging out with the rebels and stuff as well. And they'd just be like, buda, 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 buda. And, then, and then just be like, yeah, yeah, we're not going in today. And then they just drive back. And then the next day you just see that like the village was like shelled or whatever. They were just Whoa. that attuned to danger. They were really elite people and like wait, the wait, freedom wait. fighters because they've just been in nonstop conflict for the last 40 years or whatever just so attuned to their environment mm. that they can smell danger, basically. What, the, well, the, they, the they, natives. Natives and the special forces. Well, both of them. Both of them, because they're just there all the time. And yeah. the native special forces, just crack it's teams. It's job. It's their right? jobs. Um, but so anyway, he went to Jakarta. The hotel manager came. He was just like, I'll just give him the name, Bruce. Bruce, come here. Come here, Bruce. And he starts whispering to him behind a pillow and says, they're here to get you. And then he says, who's here to get me? Shh, 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 shh. You can't tell anybody. Don't even talk to the staff about this. The staff will trade you in for a second. They will give them some cigarettes and then they will trade in your life for cigarettes. You have to leave now. And so he said, I can't because my passport is up in my room. And then he just goes, oh, fuck. okay, okay, go, go, go. So Shit. he goes there and again, two extremely muscly <laughs> Indonesian <laughs> dudes with like these menacing ponytails back here. <laughs> <laughs> but because they have a look as well. They, yeah. There's like, you know, when someone's part of the free men in Indonesia, the the gangsters that would go around and do all the dirty work of the Indonesian military. Oh, and so that so, wasn't like the native tribes. No, no, he's back in Jakarta now. Okay, okay, okay. The Indonesians are trying to kill him. The native tribes want him to get the footage out to show the world gotcha, what's going gotcha, on. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. And so he's there. The, these two guys just rock up with tats, muscly as fuck. Again, death staring him. And then he just goes and goes, shit. And so he presses the elevator to go up and then says, oh, fuck, okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot something. And then while they're just closing, you see them just walking up being like, oh, and then the elevator door closes. And then he goes, let's just see where they go. Ding, 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 level 13. Fuck, they know where I am. So he runs out, runs over to the other hotel lobby, sits in there with a bunch of other uh, dignitaries and whatever because it's the elite part of Jakarta. This is the so, guy you spoke to. Mm. Fuck. So they were just going to off him in his room. And obviously it's a lot harder to do that if you're in front of a bunch of BHP execs and shit. Mm. So he was sitting in there and he was making frantic phone calls and then he rang up those special forces guys and they were just like, hello, Bruce, what can I do for you, mate? And he says, I think that there's like some special forces trying to kill me. He's just like, hold on a second. Yeah, mate, I looked around. I know who it is. Yeah, it, no, it's too hot. Can't touch it. Can't touch it, mate. See ya. Oh, shit. The special forces guys abandoned him. Oh. They were just saying, this is getting too political at this point. They were saying, nah, just stay in that hotel lobby and calling favors from dignitaries that you know we're not going to go in there and rambo this shit for you because then they'll get fucked right mm -hmm. so he was saying this at this point is political you're going to have to call favors within the indonesian government to get the hit off you and so he's frantically calling through his phone looking for someone he said he didn't trust the australian embassy at all he thought that if he just rang them up they're just like yeah, yeah he's in that hotel so <laughs> 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 so Damn. much trust in your government. But in Indonesia, there is a real divide like there is in a lot of third world countries between the military and the bureaucracy. So he does have a lot of foreign affair dignitaries that are just a lot more mellow and chill that understand that they are in a gangster capitalist system where gangsters are legitimately the party of power there mm. most of the time. And so he was just talking to that dignitary and saying, you're going to have to help me get out of here. 
And so he just says, okay, let me just make some calls. And then he rings back and then he just goes, okay, I can't do anything for you. But uh, it, when you see a black car come out, you are going into that car. Don't catch taxi. Don't do any. Just sit where you are. Wait for the car. And then he gets in and the dignitary is in there. And he's saying, you can't ever come back to Indonesia again. If you come out, like I'm risking my life now to get you out. And they drive to a diplomatic immunity plane. He chucks him in there and then just runs away and says to the pilot, go. And then he flies back to Australia. And he hasn't been to Indonesia since. Wait, wait. Wow. I've got, I've, um, I think I missed part of the story. Shit. Why were they trying to kill him? Because he was, he, was getting- he was trying to expose shit about West Papua. Mm. And so the government realised who he was because this was before social media. So you didn't know who yeah, he yeah, they yeah. was and stuff. And like, it's just some old cunt just being like, uh, I'm here surfing. Mm, <laughs> and so yeah. they kind of wised after a while, just be like, hey, he doesn't have bleached hair. <laughs> 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 Dude, that is insane. Can you imagine living, being in that situation? That's a fuck situation. To that's be what in. I'm saying, man. There used to be, hardcore journalists in this country yeah. that used to do that kind of stuff. They don't exist anymore. He was just saying the entire apparatus of the ABC hey, and the SBS, they're just, as I say, seagulls that sit there waiting for drops. They don't do anything. They just watch fucking CNN all day and go like, oh, CNN said this. And actually Vice, go out man? and get stories. But even Vice. Vice. No, but like Vice, Vice, was, uh, Vice did some shit back in the day. It did back in the day. But really. now, dude, they didn't even do hardcore shit, really. Like, North dude, Korea. A lot of they they was went like, to Iraq. This is a dangerous area. And you look on the side and the sound guy's just sitting there with That's a bubble. That's not wrap. true. But they don't dude, even- they always did that. That shot of like, fuck, fuck, we got to get out of here. No, you don't. <laughs> That's not dude, accurate, dude. Just be honest. So like, you're like, in Orlando, <laughs> Florida. And you're just in the, it's a small world after all, right? <laughs> like that Ricky Gervais movie, have you seen that? He's the, no, the I Ricky haven't, that's such Eric a Bonner fucking brutal Ricky. thing to say. It's like, psh, 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 fucking bubble wrap. Like, dude, I that's swear, not was, true. Because they just had to get that shot every time of like, we've got to get out of here, it's just dangerous. Fuck off. But dude, that's not true. No, but even, they're not even doing bubble wraps anymore. No, but Vice I saw I saw one of their like uh, recent um, coverage, Dogos. which was supposed to be like uh, the hardcore ones. They yeah, did it on like the India, Pakistan, um, um, uh, border uh, firings and shit. Yeah, it was shit. It was lazy. It, 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 first of all, no one time. always yeah. lazy. They were never good. They never took like opinions of like it was. It just seemed like someone was sitting down and they were like, "Well, we need a we need a video in a in a week." And then us. Uh, I always hated those journalists. Once everyone was like, "Wow, that was so gutchy." It was always just them in a war zone, just being like. Ugh! Dodging landmines, running up to an enemy colonel or something, being like, "Dude, where can I get shrooms?" <laughs> <laughs> I, look, but I, they I, they I, ended up going to like <laughs> man, like when they when they were they were inside of Raqqa during ISIS rule. That's that's a difficult thing to do. Raqqa microphone, pam pam, free stereo. <laughs> oh, yes, when Iraq was ruled by bomb funk MC, <laughs> it was boy. the world. <laughs> Yo. This weird dream. Uh, look, I, I won't fully agree with that. There were definitely some where they were definitely risky. But I'll, yeah, I, the bubble wraps can get too intense for your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it was that. pretty cool. Like, you went to Pakistan such once. Slanders, I can say. Yeah, yeah, no. It was a bubble wrap. Is, isn't it amazing? Yeah, it really is what? slander. <laughs> That's around. what happened. Um, I swear. Okay, someone. You're uh, right about the ABC. Actually, er- Eric sure. wants to know what happened in the Muscly guy. Is he still shining shoes? Can you expand on that? <laughs> yeah, you never <laughs> finished what happened. What? He was just watching. He was just waiting for him to come out of the hotel lobby and then pss, silencer him and then fuck off. Man, yeah, that's yeah. like a Scorsese movie, but it's, more. It's actually, really sorry, it's a. Uh, what's his name? The guy who made um, uh, JFK. Oliver Stone yeah, movie. It's an this Oliver is an Stone Oliver film. Stone movie. No, it's, it's really, really hardcore what happens there. And because everybody understands the lay of the land in West Papua, which is that uh, the, the local population are complete subjects at the mercy of the Indonesian government. And so it's just day to day. Supported by us as well. No. What? Not anymore. They used to support, we we were supporting them in East Timor for a very, very long time because the US was supporting them. But the US doesn't even have any we're states suppo- in West Papua. We're not supporting the rebels in West Papua. No, we're not supporting the re- rebels in West Papua. Then who who are we siding with? We're not siding with anyone. We're just completely ignoring it. Neutral, yeah. Um, 
Because if you do go into it, then obviously you start a trade war with Indonesia. But like Scott Morrison will start a trade war with China to get headlines in the Murdoch press. Well, those are a dime a dozen. They never give me a good run. So bizarre. So weird. So bizarre. But I think that the reason that that genocide is actually happening is because there's just a company there that makes a lot of money from the gold mine. And if you stopped that gold mine from going ahead, you'd stop the genocide. Straight it's up. It's really yeah. just Is gold like, still such a fucking massive commodity? They have mining? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's you're like gold. three grand an ounce. <laughs> Why? Like, haven't we moved well, on? Because it's ageless. Huh? And it's used in a lot of technology. It's an elixir that cures what ails <laughs> you. In not- fact, I bet you if you rubbed gold on your back, it'd be fine. <laughs> Dude, I just feel like gold is like the gold predominant. Will be fine. I feel like gold is predominantly used for like Casio watches. Like I don't think it's did you, true. Did, that. Do you want to hear something fucked up? This is apparently true. Eighty percent, seventy to eighty percent of the entire gold reserve of the world is apparently with Indian housewives. Oh yeah, really? that lucrative fucking market. <laughs> they love they they oh, love for hoarding fuck's gold. Sakes, it's eighty like percent, something like that. Some ridiculous, amount, maybe sixty percent. But like it's it's yeah, significant. it's using a lot of technology. Shit. And the other twenty percent is owned by Rick Rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's using a lot of it's using a lot of technology. My ass, it's like using the technology hey, of Im- of impressing people at like. Uh, what are those Indian things called? Those big uh, bazaars. <laughs> Bazaar. <laughs> what, I think you say weddings. Um, yeah, they're it's using, same thing. It's used in phones, but like, it's just strange to me. Gold that is getting more valuable. Gold is, is like, yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've got uh, here we go. Mislav. We've entered the Bitcoin territory. Doesn't this, this is crazy. People have to tell Miss Love, uh, gold is actually a valuable <laughs> item, would you believe? And I'm <laughs> telling you, it's stupid. You don't understand. Oh, I personally don't value it. Exactly. What's the point of it? It's you and Lennon, both of them hated gold. Stick to gas and mate. Jack Lang. I got to say, <laughs> stick to gas and fucking, you know, coal, mate. But uh, what's a CPU? It is, it is a very interesting. <sighs> Come on, nerds, spill the beans. <laughs> Tell me your secret. Spill what is a CPU? This is a mystery. <laughs> what's your monitor, <sighs> Miss Love? That's a CPU. Oh, a fucking computer. Jesus Christ. Why didn't you say so, cunt? Put, take your head out of your well, ass, Someone's champ. saying gold is used in guitar pedals too. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It definitely would be. That's no. the type of technology they would be using. No. Gold. Not the ones you buy because you can't afford them, but Dude, like good it, ones. No, that's not Sticky true. Sticky Dicky says bullshit. gold's value use, is prime. They use, ele- they use stuff like silicon, germanium. Hey. Listen to Sticky Dicky, all right? Sticky Dicky is right. Gold's value primarily comes from its function as a store of value. That is absolutely correct. Which is why Lenin said that after the communist revolution, gold will be used for bathroom taps. But it is actually a sensible storage of value. Because it doesn't break down. You can make it anything. You can make you can make steel that. No, you can't. Why? Steel will break down eventually. It'll rust. Dude, gold, it's not about do you realize? What about stainless? It's gold's, not about gold's, breaking down. Gold's, not, gold's not that fucking strong. It breaks. Yeah. It, pure gold is like malleable. Yeah. It's like fucking. You can. Fucking it's like gold. Yeah, it, it retains its value. It retains its value because we we give. What's it its value? practical use? No, it's one of the only metals or elements on Earth that doesn't disintegrate after. That's time. not the reason why it's uh, expensive. So look, no, but that's that's that was a reason that it started to become value yes, in the first yes, place. Yes, now and it's also of the that it's it's, of it's much harder to find than something like steel. So there's yeah. uh, there's that, uh, and diamonds for and that. And also, probably when it was valuable, they didn't know how to make this shit. So you're just yeah. agreeing with me? What gold? Stupid. It is really weird that you are completely uneducated on the world, but I know how it works. I got street smarts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> listening to that guy that you listen to all the time, that jazz musician. Miles Davis. Yeah, Miles Davis. <laughs> Tell me everything I know through notes. It's true, isn't it? I learned about economics through B minor jazz scales. <laughs> <laughs> I could, uh, and on the fly soundtracks to French films. Yeah. And of course, I learned to have the most fucked haircut in the world. <laughs> That guy's fucked. <laughs> you, I mean, do you think what the Indonesians are doing to West Papua was fucked? I beg to differ. <laughs> Just look at that guy's hair for the last 10 <laughs> years of his life. <laughs> oh, so, okay, Marilini right. says, Miss Love, gold is sometimes used for albums. Do you know, like, uh, gold was like every every albums. single dollar. 
Mm-hmm. Every money that we own before every the night, every every monies we own yeah. before the 1930s yeah. was also pegged to the uh, gold. Which I'm not is saying why it doesn't have a history. I'm by not the saying- way, you know that that's why Jack Lang is such a visionary because he was the first person in recorded history yeah. to say, "How the fuck are we doing this?" He was the first guy. Wait, wait what, when was Jack Lang's uh, reign? Uh, he got elected first in the 20s and then Damn. got re-elected in the 30s. Yeah, prime <laughs> time to come up with that realisation as well. Yeah. Yeah. He um, was the first one to notify because the whole world was looking at how to get out of the depression and then all the economists around FDR said it and so he took credit for it. But it's like the Pavlova thing. We invented it. Take that, New Zealand. <laughs> That's look, two things you didn't invent. Fuck you. It's just, look, the reason <laughs> I'm really saying it is I guess I'm just sad that like what about a diamonds? generation, diamonds are a similar argument. It's it's sad that a generation, I suppose this is the same, th- the, the same story with any m- extraction of minerals or resources. Cause you know, indigenous people in like Canada get displaced for oil and that. But like, it's just sad that like- Every a, every indigenous person almost everywhere is getting like uh, displaced because of that reason. That's what I'm saying. I don't know, that, West Papua and Papua New Guinea, there'd be like nice little tracks a, where they just wouldn't be know they exist yeah yeah the, that's in, what I'm in india like the india also has indigenous populations <laughs> really which, yeah there's jawanese or whatever um they're known as uh indians <laughs> call Jones. them um Adi- <laughs> indians call them like adivasis or something but they're they're just they're indigenous um indians that have been living Do they look like indians um they're <laughs> I don't know if this is a cancel worthy thing to say and I'm, I really gold. apologize if I'm being <laughs> offensive in this just moment say it. Uh, they they look more like Aboriginals than they look like uh, North Indians. A U W U Panthera Panthera Panthera. I'm Keep but like on. I don't mean this is like it's like when I I made a, a a video once and I had to put a picture of um the the indigenous people of Mal- Malabar Kerala and um and underneath that video I had to put in a title that this is Malabar Kerala because um the resemblance was, was pretty strong. Anyways. Um, that's where human beings sort of originated, wasn't it? They originated You go from Africa. Africa, then you start moving. But when they left Africa, they were like homo habilis or some shit, weren't they? Yeah. Mm. Well, there's a... This, this must have been after that, though. That was that was probably much before that. Anyways. Um, but yeah, same thing. Same thing's happening with them. The Indian government wants to like uh, extract all of this bauxite, which is in their lands, uh, prime mining zones, and they're basically waging a war against them. They, b- they've become, they formed an alliance with uh, Maoists. Really? Yeah, so well, Maoists right. and indigenous Indians are East fighting. East India, West India? This is around uh, Northeast India, mostly. Wait, you know what? So Dude, Indians aren't indigenous to India? You know no, what you no, see most over of them and aren't. over again throughout what? the planet? What? Natives love Marxism. Dude, oh. natives just love their <laughs> land. And Maoists in that area are the only ones that are willing to help them fuck with the Indian government. They became really successful too. Wait, are Maoists they, like, what do you mean by Maoists now? People that believe in Maoist ideals. And they're like suppressed by the Chinese government? They're not, they're not like- No, 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 they, they operate in India. They believe in a Maoist like revolution for India and ah. they formed an alliance with indigenous populations that are fighting against the Indian they, government. And those Maoists are uh, 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 Indian genetically, like they're Indian. Yeah, racial. yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be Indian. So how, what numbers are we talking here? How many Maoists there are? Yeah. Thousands. Thousands. Is that all? Yeah. That's fuck all. That's shit all. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands? Yeah, well, they're yeah. getting better. Who are the resistance? Uh, I mean, so, uh, in, in some areas they have like uh, entire control. Like, for example, the Communist Party was in control in the state of Bengal, which is also in India, one of the biggest provinces over there. Right now? Not right now. I think they recently got out of power, but they've been in power for like two decades or something. Have they ma- have they been managing their society successfully? Um, Arguable. <laughs> arguable. <laughs> yeah, but Another on, theory for in <laughs> India is managing their province successfully. Well, I don't know. Maybe don't the know. tech billionaire area that's probably run by Ro Connor in his spare time. <laughs> <laughs> the world's such but a yeah, but like same thing. Place. These 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 old school indigenous people have taken up arms because they just it's they don't of- want like the government to like extract like basically just the, the Indian government wants to like literally take over the entire land, bulldoze it, and take out as much bauxite as possible. Oh, sorry, you just reminded me. Also, with this guy, uh, maybe like 10, 15 years after he went to West Papua. He just got this call one day on his phone. 
And they were just saying, hello, Bruce. And he said, hey, who's this? And he's just like, I don't know what his name was. This is Atongo or whatever. He, like, I can't remember. And, and then he's just like, what the fuck? How the oh. fuck did you get my number? <laughs> he was a guerrilla fighter in the middle of the jungle that Jesus. had no access to any telecommunications when they left last time. But what happened is the Indonesians, while expanding the mine, had to build phone towers. And so they tapped into the phone towers to communicate, uh, to uh, coordinate attacks, right? And so they rang him up and they were just like, how's it going, man? And he was just saying... I, last time I talked to you, you were a 10-year-old boy. How's it been, man? He was like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. This morning, I killed 20 Indonesians. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fuck me. Whoa. So it was like a hardcore bloodbath. What a hero. That is happening in there at the moment. Yeah. Dude, he's like, he, that. I have no idea how many people these guys are killing. It's but bizarre. It's, it's, man, but at what point do we just say, come on, it's self-defense? Mm. No, yeah. I'm, I don't know. Like, all I'm just saying is- Too hot. Too hot of a take? What? No. In, no, everyone's going to side with that. Oh, but they, they I don't think- okay, yeah, it's not too hot. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, of course it's not too hot. Right? I mean, if, you, if you're fucking- Yeah. It's They're defending- I don't, I, think defend, I don't think anyone defending themselves from a genocide is too hot. Except for Palestinians. They are very bad. Well, the, the jury's not out on that. We don't know, we're not talking about that. We don't know the facts. Fine, genocide. Mister, why do you hate Palestinians? I again? don't hate Palestinians. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I just saw one cartoon. And I was like, hmm, makes you think. Uh, what was the cartoon? I'm curious. I don't know. It was just sort of like answer these questions. Who was in charge of Palestine before Arafat? When was there? Uh, when where were the, where were they like when was they when were they officially a country when when did their uh, borders get sanctioned legally when did, what territories just stuff that's ambiguous I suppose Damn, yeah, such it's not shit arguments <laughs> what are yours like I yeah, banks no but it's the, the same end. thing it's just like the U S just said <laughs> no nah, China doesn't exist Taiwan's China for yeah. thirty years or something. And that was just the way it panned out. And they said, no, no, we're giving that vote to the UN. That China is just mystery map territory. And for the all answer, we know, there's just sea monsters have there. You the seen, for all I know, there might just be sea monsters Have you there. seen the ghost cities? You tell me that looks real. <laughs> and the answer to your question is the British controlled it before. It was called the British Mandate Palestine. But what about before that? It was always known as Palestine, but who controlled it is because, uh, like you know, the whole idea of nation states is so new. This was a post-British thing. Nation right. states were invented in like the Europe, right? So they they brought that over there. But like the area was always known as Palestine. There was coexistence of Jews, Christians, and Muslims, but because of sheer numbers, you could say the Muslims controlled it at the time. Mm. Um, until obviously after 1949, when the influx of immigration started happening. But anyways, the answer to your question was, uh, we know the answer. That's not ambiguous. It's, it was the British. They controlled that area. But it's ambiguous before that. I don't think so. Why is it ambiguous You just said it was. That? No, it's just like, look, you need to get out of this like nation state idea. They were, like, we know who controlled it. People right. lived in Palestine. They still, a lot of them still, still live there. Yeah, true. They had the... They just now have like a new uh, population that live so amongst So is Palestine them. like the youngest country in, uh, in, the, in the Middle East? Palestine Probably is not, not a country. No way. Yeah. It's not a country. Right now, it's Israel is a country, and then there's something called the Palestinian territories, which have a right, which right. don't have a nation status at the moment. So they uh, so I Palestine the is not the newest. You could it <sighs> just it's yeah, it kind of doesn't. But I suppose exist at the that's moment. maybe that's what why it feels ambiguous because, like you said, there was no. Do you know why it feels ambiguous? Because there's a very powerful lobby that wants you to feel that it's ambiguous so that they can, can keep the land. And that's fair. And now that's we're getting into cancel territory. <laughs> Anyways, really? that's my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> that's, this that's my opinion. No, I, I, uh, dude, well, I'm, the guy, I mean, I'm the guy who is saying that this new... Dude, I, I, here's another thing. I think a, this, this is going to sound crazy, but I think a empire. peaceful resolution to Israel and Palestine... Is possible. Is not only po possible... It has never been this closer, in my opinion. Really? No, they, they keep shush about it, but there's a lot of stuff that's happening nah, back doors on. at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised in about four to five years, there's like a very... What do you think, there's a resolution what do you think is the ultimate? Be, I would be very surprised. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying this that I know... This is what Rod was ultimate. always saying in his book. It was just that the Israelis always just dangle on a thread that they are going to come up with some peaceful resolution for Palestine just to keep external appearances to the outside world, but internally they've got no 
uh, you know, ambition of doing that. There's there's a difference though. This time, for the first time in history, um, the typical patrons of Palestinians, like the Arab states, like Saudi Arabia, you know, all those six day war, the Yom Kippur war, they were fought by Arabs versus Israelis. So Egypt, Jordan, whoever it may be. All of these parties desperately want a resolution for Palestine so that they can gang up with Israel against Iran. So there's that difference uh, that's happening now. So like, if, if you notice, like a lot of countries are now recognizing Israel. Yeah, yeah. These are yeah, the, not in Israel's interest, though. Israel, Israel doesn't care Israel's, if everyone hates them. Israel's interest is that they just they get a war with this. They they isolate Palestine to the extent where like even their friendly Arab neighbors, they'll, look, they'll give them a piece of land. They they they'll give them. Gaza. Um, which is basically what they already have, like Gaza West Bank. and West Bank. Um, the the big issue is about uh, East Jerusalem. My guess is the Israelis might even give East Jerusalem because East Jerusalem isn't like in Jerusalem. It's actually a little further away from Jerusalem. So it's not that hard to do. And that could be perceived as like, oh, dude, I'm saying it. I, I, I think that the resolution may be possible. It'll be a... a sh- well, you know what? If the I think it is the Labour Party there. If they get in, which they never do, because they've got what? What's their coalition called again? No the, idea. Uh, but by the way, like uh, just so the the the, the, the Mensheviks. <laughs> no, no, no. What? <laughs> the Mensheviks. The don't mention it. Israel. <laughs> Israel has offered a peace plan, and which has been supported bipartisan. So the U.S. This was the Trump Jared Kushner uh, diplomacy. So what Israel has done is that. After like a decade of saying, now nah, we're not going to give you anything. You guys, you're just terrorists. We're going to kill you. We're going to build walls. So like extreme pressure on the Palestinians. Now they have offered them a possible peace plan, which is give them uh, the Palestinian territories, not East Jerusalem. And they have also said that we are giving Palestinians five years to come up with their acceptance for it or negotiate how you would want to go about this. Palestinians initially, when they released this plan, um, said, no, we hate this and this is just another example of our dominance. But then it's been quiet ever since. My guess is there's some heavy diplomacy happening backdoors between Arab countries, Israel, and representatives of Palestine. Who is the... uh does pa- Palestine have like a prime minister? <laughs> yeah, his name's. Uh, I, I think it's been changed, but he, his name used to be Mahmoud Abbas. So okay. you know how. So you, so you saying that That's whole the region w- was just uh, that, like from like Egypt to, you know, I don't know Jordan or whatever. All those countries were just there was English occupation, and before then there was no representatives of the country. There was no political institutions. No, of course they were political institutions, but they were localized. They weren't. They they weren't sovereign in the sense that we now consider things to be sovereign. They were local represented that that dealt with their own local issues. So councils. Yeah, councils. Sure, they were councils. They were right. even like regional representation. Um, <coughs> but the idea of like having a prime minister or a president and having yeah, it's a, a that, Western. This, this I understand is, that. Not yeah. only is it Western, but it's also fairly new. So if you look for that in the previous, you, you it'll be difficult for you to find Kange. exactly that. When huh? the Kang, the uh, sorry, the uh, sorry, Kange. the answer to uh, the answer to that could, before the British. The other power that had control over it were the Ottomans. Yeah, the Ottomans. The Ottomans yeah. controlled it for a long time. After yeah. the First World War, the Ottomans were defeated. So it's really a question. It's really a story of like empire uh, occupation since. That's since the story the of everything. Yeah, yeah. Empire occupation. Yeah. So the the uh, Rome, basically the Ottomans right? controlled it, right? Rome, so it was yeah. yes. It was basically hey, under speaking of Israel. Yeah. No, you just mentioned Rome, but anyway, can we go? What were you going to say? Well, that's how this all started. What? In Rome? Oh, yeah. yeah after all the riots after back. Jeebus, <laughs> Pontius Hashtag. Pilate was just writing back to the Roman emperor. No, sorry, Senate, I think it was at the time. <clears throat> and saying, we got to do something about this place. These people are fucking nuts. And so the officials wrote back and said, disband the entire city. And they just said to everybody that was living there, because they were just causing so many riots and so much trouble for the empire, and it was just becoming more of a burden than keeping it. So they just said to everyone, everyone fuck off. We don't care where you go in the empire. Damn. You can live wherever you like. Really? But you're not living there. In like and Jerusalem. they just started splitting them up. Did you, wow. you mean the Jews, right? The Jews. Yeah, they went, that's, that was the, that was the, that was the great that's migration. That's why they like, next year in Jerusalem. <laughs> it all starts with that. Right. But in defense of like just the Israeli position, I think like even people that support Palestine should know this. Every time Palestinians were offered 
um, p- part of Palestine as their independent country. So in 48, the British mandate of Palestine, they divided it between... Look, what the British did was they, uh, during the First World, they so get, got support from the Arabs as well as Jews to yeah. defeat the Ottomans. And they promised both of them Israel. Oh, okay. They just wanted to win the war. Yeah. So when they won the war, what they did was they divided up Israel and Palestine into two countries. And most of Israel today would have been Palestine at that point. And Israel yeah, got... Yeah. No, I've seen like the, the, the OG the, the OG map, right? So that was... Borders and how they've expanded since... So every time... The, the, the Palestinians always opposed it from a matter of principle that, no, this is our land. You don't get to divide anything up, right? Mm. And because of that position that they had, they have always never been able to come up with a resolution for it. Because if your, if your um, version is, I want everything... It's hard when like the op- opposition is like not only That's very smart, they're super technologically advanced. They're like better from you in every which way. And they've always rejected it. And then there've been wars. So there was the 48 war, yeah. which in- expanded Israel's reach. Mm-hmm. Then after that, there was the six day war in the 60s, 67, I think, which again expanded it. In yeah. fact, took over most of Egypt, Syria and Jordan. Really? Israel Shit. did. I didn't know that. The Yom Kippur War, again, were attacked. And Israel, at this point, almost came to losing. But, again, sheer brilliance of some of their generals, which is, should be studied as well, end up taking over. Not only do they defend it, they take over, again, so much of hostile territory. So Israel slowly expanded. Mm. And to their credit, they didn't expand because they, it always ended up uh, being like a repercussion of one of the wars that they had to fight. Interesting. So, Interesting. again, there, it's like, yeah, it's it's... It's split. But it's an interesting perspective of, uh, like you said, how, <clears throat> you know, pre, pre world, pre the war, that, you know, there was no kind of, like you said, territories, councils, communities. Look, this, there was always a sovereign. So before the Ottomans, mm. there used to be the Christians, again, there who, the irony is like. The Christians. As in like, so before Occup- the Ottomans, yeah. Israel was occupied by, sorry, the, when I say the Christians, I mean the Romans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my yeah, bad. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. So Yeah, the Romans. And then yeah. the, the Ottomans took over it. Yeah, yeah. So they became sovereign. Then the Ottomans left and the British and became the English, sovereign. Yeah. And then after the British, now it's for the first time ever so in hi- history, s- is, uh, Israel is like a Jewish yeah. um, so it's, control sovereign. So it's almost like, yeah, it kind of is like, I suppose it is... A, if you look at it from that perspective, it's the his- the history of the world, you know. I mean, the history, like you said, the history of the world is the history of uh, occupation of empires to an extent. I mean, that's, you look at the map of the world even now and it's like you still see remnants of that. But it's kind of like how countries can adjust in the modern age to, uh, to, to adjust to like the modern system of like sovereignty, independence, like elected officials. Mm-hmm. And then like, but it, you know, how does a country do that if that's not, um, if they've never <laughs> really done that, you know what I mean? Obviously, you can be. No, they have. No, that's, they that's have not, to an extent. Like they they're to all an kind of bullshit ideas, though, yeah. aren't they? What do you mean? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, they are. Like, they're all sort of like. Look, but, but, but they're bullshit ideas, but at the same time, it's like when you've got like a currency and. You, government isn't they a bullshit have currency. idea. I know they have yeah. currency. I'm saying a government isn't a bullshit idea. If you think about it, Mio. Well, okay, like, uh, there's certain advantages. What are you, a libertarian now? What? There's certain advantages to having a government, like <laughs> certain. <laughs> well, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Devils like, advocate certain, to the mess. You know, <laughs> okay, look, anarchy. You at least good. concede to this that, like, yeah. having without having some sort of centralized government and like national identity, it's not easy to function in the 21st century. It's not easy to like be on the world stage. I don't know, man. It's kind of shifting the other way, isn't it? How's that? I suppose there's some countries China. that are getting ultra nationalist, but a lot of them are kind of just decentralizing and having this one world mentality because it's just about globalization, isn't it? Yeah, but that plays a part in that. I don't think like Palestine uh, or any country uh, not having uh, having you know not not having like a centralized government and sort of being like kind of disparate. It's not going to help them in terms of like trade or I don't know distributing like I don't know an economy. Anything like that. You yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Right, right, right. I'm not... Bl- I'm but, but the thing is that, you know, this idea that 
because they haven't been a country in the past, how are they going to do it in the future? It's, it's like everything in life. It's just like when you start out a business, the business that you end up with is completely different. That's really what happens in all of these things. With the formation of a new nation, they have these kind of bullshit ideas that they put in a constitution, then everyone ignores the constitution, and then it just kind of naturally falls into place. Mm. Sure, yeah. Happens. Also, someone's paying me, they're saying like between um, uh, Romans and Ottomans, yeah. uh, there was another period where um, Palestine wasn't controlled by Romans. So who was it? Tell me, tell me. I might have missed it. <laughs> Whoever's like paying me, I was like, oh my God, uh, history, really? rest in peace. Tell me who was it. Salah is Ottomans. always just like some fucking genius. Someone who's read, uh, like the, it's, it's, it's always the same thing. It's just like, oh, I know heaps about this one subject. Fuck you, unsubbed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know what there you is expect. A, this is all just off the cuff shit. Teenager says it was Gillard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's similar. Are there similar? What are similar uh, countries? Arabs, Persians. Yeah, well, but uh, soup barns oh, missed 800 years. But what was it? Oh, the Umayyads and the Abbasids. Anyways, yeah, controlled oh, by like the, the whole Salatine, Salatine era. Anyways, whatever. It's controlled by the Muslims. That's why I said Christians Can you initially. Talk about, uh, are th- what are other countries that have a similar... Wait, what did they say? Can you talk about... Huh? No, I think they're... I, th- I think cares? we're... cares? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, job service providers. What? <laughs> Fun. <laughs> job service? I don't even know what that means. That one with the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, they're, they're really oh, pushing you in the right direction. They've job got service. what is known as a computer <laughs> and you can sit down and you can look at pedestrian jobs from there. Wait, what is job service provider? I don't know. Ignore uh, that. What, what dude, are, what, it's, it's so boring. It's, like, it's, it's more boring than Israel versus Palestine. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Um, what a, <laughs> what, yeah. what? Anyways, look, if I can be interested in pa- West Papua, you can be interested in Israel and Palestine. No, the no, only no, I'm not thing saying that makes West Jordan Papua, Jordan. The only thing that I am interested in is that thing of just being like, is this Expendables the movie or not? <laughs> That's the big question there. <laughs> Well, I, look, I we're a, kind of we 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 are running out of time, so yeah, no, let, we can we, wrap it up. Yeah, look, maybe we should uh, maybe we should uh, wrap it up. What's this? Someone saying, look up Daniel Shuftan. Who's that? You know okay, who that is? noted. We will Daniel, Daniel Shuftan. Someone was asking, what are your other sources than Chomsky? None. There's no <laughs> point. Like, okay, all right, yeah, Michael Print, he's pretty good, and he sits there with his. New York Italian accent going, hey, hey, no Chomsky is a pansy. I'd like to go one on one. Is that with what he would say? <laughs> he ain't from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. Well, if you're, if you're no pro about. Israel, then Alan Dorshevitz would be a good Dorshevitz. reference point. Who's that? He the is. most Jewish man alive. <laughs> <laughs> he, he actually was the lawyer for OJ Simpson. Oh, God. I'm not pro or against anything. I just want to try to hear as much information as In fact, as he's possible. the only person that triggers Chomsky. Alan Dorshevitz, yeah. yeah. Because that, that Alan Dorshevitz is just a... Of just like the, that is the real Ben Shapiro versus Chank Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Jesus. No, it's just these kind of questions. Uh, Look, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Principally, Palestinians are right. Practically, and for future, they're very wrong. They should probably come up with a compromise. Well, well actually, Joshua always right. makes the argument of like, dude, come on. This is at that stage where you walk into a Chinese shop and there is just a barrel of duck's vaginas. Like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Like, Israel has won. Yeah. They're yeah, so yeah. dumb. And it's true. They, they not only have they won against Palestinians, they've won against most of the countries. But okay, the how about this? What's the most. What's, what's the. Uh, Israel. That's pretty much his argument. Alan Dorshevitz also do. says something which is cool is like, the Dorsh. Palestinians never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Right. Which is, again, uh, not in, in factual. Actually, you know what I want to just end this on? You Here know what I've go. noticed? What? Everyone who's a new male shit cunt <laughs> that works in the, you know, the, the ABC or it's like uh, a, one of those, like, they're checker out or something like that. They're always you know, one of those for loser that. organizations. They're always one of those loser organizations. They're always, the this is why I'm always just constantly pushing Tony Robbins and Chomsky, because really, what else do you need? Politics covered by Chomsky, yourself covered by Tony Robbins. I'm going to teach you the power of brushing your teeth. <laughs> but uh, I really think that there's, if you really need a shorthand, you should just immerse yourself in those two first off. But you know what you notice that these people always immerse themselves in? Stuff like Malcolm Gladwell. That's pretty much just sitting there being like, actually, it's really interesting. Everything's just random chance and you have no choice in Post-modernists? life. Post-modernists? Um, Post-modernists? 
No, they're just it people who kind like of just like get a bunch of really inane facts together and sit there and just like write out some very boring thesis at the right. end where you're just like, okay, I fell asleep halfway through your talk. What was the point of it again? Uh, there, there's no point. There's no point. Uh, <laughs> that I is just, a post I just go and call bear every now and then. Yeah, everything is random. She'll just enjoy the ride. It's always that. They always are into how to lie with statistics and freakonomics. It's a very obvious just kind of like normie intellectuals. They're always into these people, right? right? They don't really say anything or really challenge anyone's worldview. Mm. Who's Slavoj Žižek? Slavoj Žižek. Slavoj, wait, what, what about him? Someone asked. Well, said Chomsky good. said the most biting yeah, thing Slavoj he's ever Žižek said about anyone like, for that. And Slavoj Žižek's response was mad. What? But he was saying, oh, I would have a critique of Slavoj Žižek if I knew what he was talking about. Oh, it's yeah. very hard to listen to him when he sounds like Daffy Duck, but it's also... <laughs> I know, you didn't say no, that. No, no, but like, it, was, it was also just saying that he just goes on rambling. Chomsky, <laughs> Chomsky slammed Duncan. <laughs> Duncan, Daffy Duncan Duck. Duncan. But he was saying that, and then yeah. uh, Slavoj's response, he, he's just a funny Eastern European man, essentially. Yeah. And he was just being like, I heard... Chomsky making fun of me the other day. And I just want to tell him right now, right now, I'm looking at you right now, Chomsky. I forgive you for that. I am still a big fan of you. I am really, really like you. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan too. I'm, I'm sold over. I don't know anything but dude, about it. Is, like, Chomsky is, he is a massive snob about any other intellectual. Yeah. I don't, I've never heard him pay anyone except for this Pakistani guy who is even more boring than <laughs> Great. Oh yeah. Great. No. And what about that Palestinian guy, Edward Said? Yeah. Chomsky loves two people. Yeah. This Pakistani academic. Um, Actually, before we, Doctor Iqbal and Edward Said, this Palestinian ask, academic. Uh, this is what I want to ask. What What is Chomsky's? What is What does Chomsky think would be not Not even a practical solution. The ideal solution. For Palestine with the whole conflict, what what was his point say? was always that well, there's actually been a very sensible proposal that's been there. There's Return a lot of problems 40, in life 40, that are 80. very complicated. No, 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 this 40, is 60, a very 70. simple one. Yeah, and he's just been saying that every country on earth has recognized it except for about five proxy states of the U.S. Yeah, so pretty much the entire world is just like just sign it, sign and it. has been for like forty wait, wait, years. Wait, sign what? What? So this? they so now the Palestinian position has slightly changed. So now they're not saying. Uh, we want in the entire country. What they want is Palestine, Palestine as it was before the sixty-seven war. Uh, yeah, yeah. And what does that look like? That's just it like it looks that's just like half, half, a right? slightly bigger Palestine. So half half land mass no, wise. No, 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 not even not close. Even like oh, okay, half. so just uh, but look. Is it's something that Israel? I think for like at least the Israeli intelligentsia. In my opinion, they won't be too opposed to it. But what they would want is a guarantee that that will solve it. Yeah, yeah. And also, the, again, the question of East Jerusalem may may come into question. So that's Chomsky's but so Chomsky has a two state solution plan. Yeah, so which is by the way different to what his plan and Edward Said's plan was before the war, which was a one state solution controlled by Palestine. <laughs> uh, Holy shit! Yeah, but before Talk before the sixties, aiming for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> one state solution controlled by Palestine. One state solution <laughs> as in people, Israel, uh, like Jews and, and Palestinians live together. Like the hunky-dory love, love, Which, love, yeah, everything. I don't think there'd be any bikinis on the but beach. But man, even this, 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 the two state solution is now becoming as unfeasible as the one state solution was at one point. Well, it has been because the whole time. all of the areas that are now that are supposed to be Palestine, the ones that like territory. are now, um, they have huge, huge Jewish populations. Yeah. Popula the Jewish populations that specifically moved there because they were making sure that that, because those are biblical lands yeah. according to them. Yeah. So they, they moved there to make sure that this can't be given away. So now you have this, if you look at the West Bank now, it's a fucking maze. It would be so hard to divide it. Um, hmm. So some some academics are almost saying, even though the Israel has offered a two state solution, but some academics are Shit. saying that it's almost impossible to even have it. So maybe we go back to a one state solution. Guys, someone just said, imagine having an Israel Palestine debate on this podcast after repeated attempts to cancel you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. well. Uh, this might be it. Thanks a lot. Well, finally, the most scenes we've been talking about. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's, let's 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 on that note. On that note, let's yeah. go. Away. Yeah. You've all been minches. Uh, I just learned what that word meant a couple it? of days ago. Darlings? It just means like, great guy. Yeah. Mm. All right. We slacked to mints. Do you want to say goodbye, Jordan? 
Oh, yeah, we've had some laughs. Thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And there was something else that I wanted to discuss in this podcast, but I'll probably remember it in our up late edition. Get signed up to Patreon oh, today yeah. for exclusive access to this, but without any footage of it. Harder to cancel, way more blue. That's right. So it's personal stories about love lost and girls that we wish we dated. <laughs> and whose anus hurts the most this week? <laughs>